This is episode 11 in Distro Delve Season 2, and we're going to be taking a look at Netrunner 20, released on February 23rd of 2020. Distro Delves is a video series where I review Linux distros while following a checklist which you can see and submit issues for on GitHub. Netrunner is a bit of an odd distribution because in the realm of KDE Linux distros it fits somewhere between KDE Neon, Kubuntu, and the now deprecated Mint KDE edition. To an end user, Netrunner is basically Debian stable with a slightly customized KDE install and some media codecs pre-installed. Netrunner uses a live session with Calamares for the installer. It's a very basic installer similar to what we've already seen a half dozen times in the series, so let's go ahead and bounce over to the welcome app. After logging in, a first time Netrunner user will be greeted with absolutely nothing. That's right, there's no welcome app or anything like that here. There's a readme on the desktop, which is nice, but it just opens a link on the website. Now, I don't think it's a big deal that there's no welcome app, but I think that people tend to expect one from a desktop-oriented distro. Netrunner here is running on Debian 10, rocking the KDE Plasma desktop version 5.14.5 with a brand new install weighing in at a hefty 7.5 gigabytes. In the way of memory usage, Free is telling us that Netrunner is consuming 704 megabytes of memory at idle, again a bit on the chonky side, and HTOP is telling us Netrunner has 93 tasks going but only 119 threads. It's interesting to compare how KDE handles tasks and threads differently than GTK desktops like XFCE and GNOME. Maybe I should do a video on that someday. While using the Plasma desktop, Netrunner has a rather unique style. I don't particularly like it, but I can see the appeal for those who do. There's no start menu app thing. It's a dashboard. It's kind of like a poor man's gnome activities or something. It's not really customizable either. I thought maybe you could make the dashboard like half size, kind of like Unity 7, which would be super cool, but nope. The Plasma look and feel like the theme itself is pretty cool. There are a few different options, with the default being Netrunner Indigo. The mouse theme is a little strange. Red? Much like Farron OS, Netrunner uses Quantum to make GTK apps look native, like cute apps on KDE, and there are some fancy window effects enabled, which you'll notice if you look for them. The font is Noto, but there's something funky about the way it's configured. The fonts just look, I don't know, off. Now despite its lofty install size, Netrunner ships with only two custom wallpapers, the other one being a standard plasma wallpaper. Both of them look great though, and with KDE it's super easy to get more wallpaper straight from the settings here. Now I didn't see or otherwise find any custom apps built for Netrunner besides some web apps which we'll get to in just a moment. The default apps are really just odd. It feels like another one of those situations where the developers just installed a bunch of stuff. GIMP and Krita, two different media players, of course, a bootloader customizer, and a very odd selection of games. Steam is pre-installed, which is nice once we get to the gaming segment. And these web apps are a little bit silly. I saw Telegram and WhatsApp and thought that maybe they were like regular desktop apps pre-installed, but nope, they link back to the website. And what's this HookTube app? Oh, whoops, there's a SSL cert issue here. It cleared up later, so I guess this was just kind of a weird fluke, but like, why are these web apps installed, or like, even here? They're not installed, they're just links to other websites. It's very odd. In NeoFetch, we see the Netrunner logo along with the name, Netrunner 20.1.20. 20. Kernel version is 4.9, 2,672 packages are installed. We've got Bash 5.0. We've got the standard KDE with Kwin and Breeze using the Indigo theme. And it doesn't list the font here, but it's Deja Vu Sans Mono, not my favorite font. Now being more or less a pure KDE distro, Netrunner uses good old Discover to manage updates. Synaptic is pre-installed, but Discover is the app a regular desktop user would use. Discover and app stores like them are somewhat unfortunate because they don't show everything available to install on the system, like NVIDIA drivers, for example. Now just like MX Linux, the NVIDIA driver available from the Debian repos is 4.18, rather old version. Commenters on the MX Linux episode of DistroDelves informed me that MX apparently has a special repo with the latest NVIDIA drivers, and I'm not sure why those didn't get installed. As far as I can tell, Netrunner has no such repos, so the 4.18 drivers are the best you'll find. Unless you want to install the drivers straight from NVIDIA, which it's not the point of this review. 
Next, we'll take a look at external drives. Our SD card plugged into the USB card reader mounted just fine, and note that the SD card was formatted with EXT FAT. Our trusty external SSD also mounted just fine, and neither the SD card reader nor the external SSD required root to mount or unmount. Next, we'll take a look at the file archive formats. We've got zip, bzip, rar, and 7-zip. All of them, including the non-free rar file format, open just fine. After that, we'll look at media codecs, starting with the audio files first. All of the audio files worked just fine, though some of them opened in SM Player and others opened in Audacious. But all of the video files played just fine with SM Player, and there was no stuttering or anything like that, which is cool. And now, in the way of third party app support, Netrunner is a bit of an anomaly when compared to other distros we've looked at in the series. It actually favors app images over flat packs or snaps, and it comes with an app image installer, which basically just moves the app image to a special directory so the system can find it. Funnily enough though, Netrunner complains about the same permission error when launching Etcher as Sparky and MX did. That must be a Debian thing. Neither flat pack nor snap was installed by default. Now, in spite of Netrunner favoring app images over other formats, there's no central, like, configurable repository for app images, at least not yet, or not that I'm aware of. So the way that Flatpaks have Flathub and Snaps have the Snap Store, there's nothing like that for app images. So if you want to get stuff out of the box through Discover or something, nah, uh, you can't. That doesn't mean that you can't just install them, like install Flatpak and then configure Flathub, but it doesn't work out of the box, and that's what we look for in the series. And most of what you'll find in the Debian stable repos is quite stale, so it's just not a great experience either way. Now OBS did not detect the NVENC encoder, which means it didn't get installed when I installed the NVIDIA driver earlier. I suspect I simply just missed the correct NVIDIA package to install, but I don't actually know which one that is. Much like Sparky, OBS defaulted to an unrealistic output size, but the playback was just fine. Now, as far as I know, there's no option to enable Samba file sharing or even DLNA sharing on KDE. There's a network section which includes a couple special subfolders, but nothing on the network was discovered. I was able to connect to my Windows laptop and my Linux workstation very easily with this very simple dialog, which is a refreshing change from the normal KDE network connections dialog, which has just tons of different options. My HP printer was detected and did not require root to modify, which is always nice. And Bluetooth was a bit weird. The Bluetooth applet found my PS4 controller, failed to connect to it, but then connected to it, and it worked perfectly until I got into a game. So there I was, playing Mad Max, everything was just fine, and I noticed something was just off when aiming the harpoon. Like, everything else felt fine until I tried aiming. Then I went over to this person here, and Max decided to just punch him right in the face. That's not the button I pressed. And here I'm trying to take down the Scarecrow, but by this point the controller was just totally jacked up. I have no clue what causes this, but it started out fine. I was able to drive around right outside of the base thing just fine, but after playing for a while, the controller just went to shit. I don't know what the hell's going on. And now we'll look at Overwatch here, which seemed to run practically flawless at the low default settings it chose. I played for about 60 seconds before it did this. Yep, it's locked up. Now remember that earlier in the season, I completed a full match playing Overwatch on this machine using a different distro, so it is not my hardware. And last, we're going to be looking at Red Eclipse here. I cranked up the graphics setting as high as they'd go, and while I didn't notice any visual improvements, I didn't notice any performance losses either, so cool. Now let's talk about the Geekbench benchmark scores. Netrunner is very similar to MX Linux, based on Debian Stable, but uses KDE instead of XFCE. How do you think it did? Netrunner returned scores remarkably similar than MX Linux. The average score was just slightly higher, but individual scores balanced them out. And for the Vulkan test, Netrunner actually eked out a slightly better score than MX in just a couple tests, while also getting a better overall score. As I said in the beginning, Netrunner is a rather odd Linux distro, and frankly, I don't mean that in a good way. I've heard practically nobody talking about it, and uh, honestly, I can see why. MX Linux offers a lot of special sauces in the way of a very different XFCE theme, custom tools, and custom repos. Netrunner offers uh, a KDE theme? That's like it. Seriously, what does Netrunner offer that KDE Neon or Kubuntu don't? 
besides being based on Debian rather than Ubuntu anyways, and I don't really see that as an improvement. I'm not sure who the target audience for Netrunner is, it's not power users, and I don't think I would say it's desktop users either. There's a lot of different versions of it, like Netrunner Core and ARM, but we're looking at the desktop version here, and that's what we're talking about. At the end of the day, if you're looking at trying out Netrunner, ask yourself, what does Netrunner do that Kubuntu or KDE Neon don't? Maybe you'll see something I missed. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Distro Delves, and if you want to contribute to the series and submit a new distro to review or update to the script, hop on over to the Distro Delves repo and check it out. If you want to support me and the channel, you can become a patron and enjoy posts about behind the scenes stuff, history about the channel, links to a playlist with old and archived videos and more. I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.